Okay, in this presentation we're going to look at survival analysis and in particular what we're going to do here is look at the Kaplan-Meier estimate. So essentially what we're going to do really is look at the calculations that are used to create the Kaplan-Meier estimate of the survival function and sort of try and sort of figure out all of the events and factors that lead to the creation of the table that I'll show you just in a minute. So a study of the mortality of 12 laboratory bred insects was undertaken. The insects were observed from birth until they either they died or the period of study ended, at which point those insects who were still alive were treated as censored. Okay, so let's look at the table here. The Kaplan-Meier, sorry, the following table shows the Kaplan-Meier estimate of the survival function uh, based on the first 12 weeks. So firstly, what we have here is we have a couple of time periods. So this corresponds to the first week, which is to say between zero and one. The second one corresponds to the second period, the, sorry, uh, the, between the first and the third week. The third one corresponds to between weeks three and six. And then the fourth one corresponds to what happens afterwards, what after time period after six weeks. So over here we have the survival function, okay? And essentially, this actually tells us how many really will uh, survive into this in this period, essentially. So let's just actually go through it here. So essentially, I'm, 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 I'm glancing over the, the, the key details. But just to remark, this one's interesting. So this actually tells us that there is 100% survival in the first period. Okay. Uh, something actually, sorry, something actually I should mention beforehand. This is very straightforward. This just really tells us what happens in the first period. But the other ones, all the other calculations, uh, uh, all the other numbers that go before it are based on what the, the numbers that preceded. So, for example, 0 0.9167 is based um, in part on that calculation, or 0 0.7130 is based in part on this calculation and so on. Essentially, the numbers that go before it in the number line or in the sequence are factors in the in the in the calculation. Just keep that in mind. What will happen here in this? I'm just discuss this one now. Is that that might be obscured? That might be obscured when I talk about this second period. Okay. So this sort of already accounts for the fact that there was a hundred percent survival here. Now, so. So I'm just going to talk about this one in particular, and I'm mindful that it, it factors in 100% survival in the previous one. So essentially what we're getting at here is that 0 0.9167, that can be written as 11 out of 12, which means 11 out of 12 of the insects survived the second period between weeks 1 and weeks 3, okay? So that, that meant that there was one death, okay? Now, I'll keep going on uh, more through it there, but essentially, that's really how to read this table. Or just to get, get, the, get a sense of what's going on. So we need to really deconstruct it a bit more, but just that will get us going. Calculate the number of insects dying at durations 3 and 6. And calculate the number of insects whose history has been censored. Now, just keep in mind, actually, that censoring can happen throughout, at any time throughout the 6 weeks. Okay? So anyway, this is the Kaplan-Meier estimate. The estimator of the survival function S of t, the probability that life is longer than t, is um, the, that's what, sort of what I was getting at there. Like, what's the probability of it being long, life being longer than six weeks? Okay, so that's why it incorporates all the numbers that precede it. That is, S of cap S hat of T. Essentially, really, this is the key part here. Okay, this is what we have to look at. Okay. And in each stage, what we have to do is calculate it and then just get the cumulative product there. Okay, so di over ni is the key thing here. Okay, ni is the number of uh, items or cases or patients who start the period. Okay, particular period. And DI is the number of events, which is usually the number of deaths inside that period. So that's how we calculate the survival rate. Okay. So lambda, we might denote that as lambda I, which is the probability of an event. And unfortunately, that usually means the probability of a death. Whereas 1 minus lambda I is the, the probability of surviving that period. Okay. 
So when you break it down actually into its component parts, actually it's quite easy to follow what's going on, okay? So that's the main definition there. Uh, to be honest with you, it's easier to sort of follow through it on a table, but this actually is a mathematical formulation of what we'll see, you know, later on, okay? So let's look at the solutions here. So essentially we're just going to read through the pro uh, work through the problem carefully. Let the durations TJ, consider the durations TJ out of which events take place. So we might have T1, T3, T, T6, and so on. So consider the number of deaths at duration TJ be DJ and the number of insects still at risk at death at duration TJ be NJ. Okay. So at TJ equal to 1, uh, it's essentially what happens in the first period. Okay, period uh, the first week to the third week, ST falls from 1.00 to 0 0.9167. Okay, now that's the definition of our Kaplan Meyer estimate. Okay, now we're conscious of the fact that it is 1 times 0 0.9167. So this is the first period here, and this is the period, the second period here. 0.9167. So essentially that's important. So what we have here in the second period, we must have 0 0.9167 equal to 1 minus lambda 1, which is the, uh, the the event probability for weeks 1 to 3. Okay. So in that case, lambda i, or sorry, lambda 1, okay, will be equal to 0 0.0833, which if you work that out, that's 1 over 12. So since lambda 1 equals d1 divided by n1, we must have d1 divided by n1 equals 0 0.0833. Now, since all 12 insects are at risk at dying at period tj equal to 1, we therefore must have it equal to d1 is equal to 1 and n1 is equal to 12. Okay. Sorry, what I'm getting at here, actually, I'm, I'm sort of laboring the point a bit and I really I sort of covered this already but essentially we do need these numbers here for the table that we're going to set up later on okay so this is the number of insects that start the period the first period uh, the weeks one to week three and this is the number of insects who die in that period here the subscript one is essentially weeks one to three okay and this is the risk of dying in that period which is one twelve okay Similarly, at TJ equal to 3, which is weeks 3 to 6, we must have 0 .9, uh, 0 0.7130. Now, that must equal to, uh, well, actually, that correctly is 1 minus 0 0.9167 times, well, actually, it doesn't really, because that's sort of uh, dependent on what came before it. So I was sort of overdoing that point there. So that is equal to 0 0.9167, okay? times 1 minus lambda 3, okay? So this is the probability of surviving into the, the start of this period, surviving up to the, to the third week, and this is the probability of dying in this period, and this uh, in weeks 3 to 6, and this is the probability of surviving at the end of this period, weeks one, uh, 3 to 6, okay? So, so what we have to get here is we have to figure out what 1 minus lambda 3 is, okay? So essentially what we're going to do here is just rearrange this expression here, just to isolate 1 minus lambda 3, okay? So that 1 minus lambda 3 is lambda 3 is equal to 0 0.9167 minus 0 0.7130 divided by 9 point, 0 0.9167, okay? Work that out, we get 0 0.222. Okay, 0 0.222, okay? Uh, and that is going to be equal to D3 over N3. Now let's consider that. What does that mean in terms of integers? Okay, so since we have at most 11 insects at risk in, in, in at the start of this period, weeks three to six, so it's essentially what we have here is we must have um, we must express this as an integer, okay? Now this is important, this bit. This is actually the, the tough part of this question. My marker's getting a bit funny here. At most, 11 insects, okay? This is actually the, the tough part of this video, really. 
So, at, uh, so essentially what we're going to do is we're going to express that as 2 over 9, okay? So what does that mean? Essentially, 9 insects have started at this period, okay? And of that 9, 2 have died. So the, essentially what I'm getting at there is that there seems to be some sort of censoring, okay? That we have lost, well, 2 of our insects are no longer in the study, uh, so they've been, let's say they escaped or something, okay? So we're actually only uh, working, basing our calculations off nine insects. And of that nine insects, uh, two, two will die, two have died, okay? So it's essentially there's censoring taking place here. So the clue here really is, this ha is essentially an integer. Sorry. This, these are two integers, okay, and this is a fraction of those two integers. So essentially what you have to do is figure out what are the plausible integers that will uh, go into making this calculation. And you can't do it with 11, really. You can't really do it with 10, but you can do it with 9, or using uh, having uh, come up with the denominator as 9, okay? So essentially what happens here is that the two of them are, two of the insects are censored. Okay, that's really the gist of this question. And it was sort of alluded to here. Okay. So I'm, I'm laboring the point, I think, but essentially this, there was a sort of little bit of a, 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 a banana skin in the question. Okay, that it implicitly sort of suggests that throughout the study, there is censoring taking place. Two out of nine. Okay. So anyway, similarly at time, uh, at, similarly at tj equals six, we must have 0 0.4278 equal to 0 0.7130 times one minus uh, lambda six, such that uh, lambda six is equal to essentially lambda six is equal to 0 0.40. Just working that out. That is equal to d. Uh, 6 over n6 okay so since we have at most two insects in the risk set at uh, let's just go down here okay at, uh, at risk set at tj is equal to 6 we must it can only work if actually two more have escaped so we're actually making our calculations based on five insects and noting that two of them have died okay so essentially what we're getting at here is that N6 has to be either 7, doesn't really work, 6, doesn't really work, 5, that would work, okay? That, that would give us plausibly an answer where we end up with 0 0.400, okay? It won't work with 7, it won't work with 6, it will work with 5, okay? So 5 would work and that, that means D6 is equal to 2, okay? So, therefore, let's go back here. Therefore, two insects uh, died at duration we, uh, three weeks and two insects died at duration six weeks. Okay? So, um, this is the table we've come up with. Okay? And this is actually comp compiles all of the information that we've collected. Okay? So, here's our periods. Okay? And... So, yeah, we start off with 12 insects in the first period, 12 insects in the second period, but only nine insects in the third period and five insects in the, on the, in the last of the fourth period. So, uh, zero have died in the first period, one have died in the second period, two have died in the third period, two have died in the th uh, fourth period there. Okay. Sorry, it should you really call them T0, 1, 3, and 6. But I'm just sort of uh, trying to sort of smooth into the terminology a little bit easier. Now this really here is the uh, the unforeseen circumstance, the unforeseen uh, uh, issue, the censoring. So essentially, what we have to do is pick up all of the censoring. Okay, try and figure out uh, what happened. Okay, so essentially, this is the table that we're looking for. Okay, so 
yeah, that's it really. That's really everything we have we need to do. So summing up the total number of deaths, essentially five of the insects have died. And since we end up with, uh, started with 12 insects, the remaining seven insects, have his, their histories have been right sensors. We don't know how long they survive. Okay. So we'll leave it there.